Hey everybody, uh, hopefully you're liking the first chapter, uh, I guess chapter and a half if you talk about the first part we read, the preface or the preface to the book. Um, so I'm here to talk about our first chapter a little bit uh, and some important parts that you really need to make sure that you are understanding before we move forward, okay? So in the preface, which we read the other day, uh, that was uh, titled 1924. So that gives us the time period in which this is all kind of starting for us. Um, we find out that um, Esperanza is this like wealthy girl. She lives on this large ranch with her parents. Uh, there's servants there, right? And Papa talks to her about um, the land and feeling the heartbeat of the land, kind of like this is something that's important to us. Um, and that's how they kind of start the book for us. Our first chapter, Las Uvas, hopefully, I'm saying that correctly, uh, translates into uh, to be grapes uh, in English. And that is now six years later. So this is now 1930, right? Because the preface was in 1924. So this is now in 1930 because it is, um, sorry, six years later. So the beginning of this chapter, we're, we're finding out that uh, it's the harvest season for the grapes at the ranch, which is um, the Ranchos uh, de la Rosa, which is a ranch of the roses. Um, Esperanza's parents uh, are with her and they encourage her kind of to uh, kind of kick off the festivities of this grape harvest, right? Papa gives her a knife. They kind of tell her to go towards the uh, grapevine. She cuts off one and everybody starts yelling and cheering. Um, Esperanza talks about how this is one of her favorite times of the year. Uh, because she loves the harvest time, she loves watching the harvest, but also because it's her birthday, it's around this time, okay? Uh, this year, she's going to be turning 13. Um, that's again in 1930. Uh, she talks a little bit about her friends, uh, Marisol being one of them, who I believe is one of her better friends. You'll hear a little bit more about her as we continue on through the book. Um, and they're talking about their quinceañeras, and I know some of you may know what that is already, but for those of you who don't know what a quinceanera is, it's kind of like a sweet 16, except where it happens a year earlier. So it's traditional um, 15 years old. It's like a coming of age for uh, women. Uh, they have a party. Uh, and that's kind of like when they're, they're moving from being like a girl into a woman, uh, kind of like a, a getting older ceremony party. Um, from there, we kind of go forward a couple of weeks where they're starting to prepare for this party, uh, which again is going to be her birthday party now, right? Her birthday is during this time. Um, she's out in the garden and she's waiting for Papa to come and she pricks her thumb on a rose. So if you're not sure, roses actually have thorns on them, even though they have this really nice flower on the end of them, they're bushes and they have sharp thorns on them. So she actually pricks her finger on one and she thinks to herself, bad luck. So that's something we should be thinking about uh, while we're reading this or even going forward is that this happened to her and she's automatically thinking about bad luck that, you know, hey, I went to go uh, pick this rose or she was trimming roses and she cut herself and she thought, oh, this is not a good sign. And then we come to find out shortly after that, that she's waiting for Papa and it's getting dark. He still hasn't come back yet. Uh, he was supposed to be working with um, or working uh on or with the cattle or the cows that they have. Um, and she's kind of thinking back and forth about that. And she's thinking that, you know, uh, the next day is going to be her party for her birthday. Uh, she's thinking about presents and she's sure she's going to get this doll from Papa um, like she does every year. So she's thinking about that. She's thinking about Papa. Um, and then as it keeps continuing to get later, her and Mama are kind of uh, getting more worried and worried. Um, and especially now that they've heard that there are bandits in the area that Papa's been working. Uh, so again, this is really worrying them. And this is where our um, first time we see this kind of historical thing coming into play, right? Because Esperanza starts talking about how her father, who is a wealthy landowner, um, uh, is good to, to his, his workers um, and that he's not like other wealthy people. Um, and this all stemmed from the Mexican Revolution. There was a lot of uh, resentment. A lot of um, poorer people did not like wealthy landowners. Um, so 
even though Papa is a wealthy landowner, I don't think he really fits into that category of one of these uh, wealthy landowners who tries to oppress or uh, keep down the workers um, and treat them poorly. He's somebody who treats them fairly well. Uh, and we'll find out some more about how he treats workers or how he treated or treats workers going forward. Um, so he actually uh, is, he actually says that he um, has given land to some of his workers, which is something that um, most wealthy landowners did not do at the time. Um, again, they're still waiting for Papa to come home at this point. Esperanza goes inside with her, uh, with her mother. They have tea with her grandmother, who's Abuelita. Uh, again, I believe Abuelita is Spanish for grandmother. And again, those of you who speak Spanish, you'll know. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Uh, and Abuelita's, uh, she's knitting um, in the background with her and, and talking to Esperanza about this pattern, right? She's talking about... Um, she's crocheting and she's making this like zigzag pattern. She's talking about going up the mountain and, and down and Esperanza is kind of messing this up. Um, and one thing that we really have to be conscious of is this pattern that we we're hearing about from Abuelita. It's, it's going to come up again multiple times uh, throughout the book. So it's really important that we think about this as not just, Oh, she's making a blanket. Uh, it's a symbol or it's really telling us something deeper about what's going on uh, besides just that they're making a blanket. Uh, Esperanza is doing hers with her, her grandmother or with Abuelita and hers is kind of like all a little messed up. It's weird. It's not coming out right. And Abuelita says to her, you know, just don't be afraid to start over. Like, hey, you can take it back out and, and start from the beginning again to make sure that it's um, correct. Um, then we start to find out a little bit information about uh, the housekeepers, right? Hortensia is the housekeeper. Um, Alfonso, who uh, works for Papa, he's one of his, like, uh, uh, I guess you would say, like, head workers or lead workers. And then their son, Miguel, um, who lives with them as well. Uh, so we find out some more about Miguel and his relationship with Esperanza. They were always like playing with each other when they were younger and, and having a good time. Uh, and Esperanza makes this statement one day, again, we're, we're talking when they're younger, makes a statement, I'm going to marry Miguel. Um, but now she's coming as, I should say, as she's getting older, she's kind of coming to this realization that, you know, she's a, a daughter of a wealthy ranch or landowner, and she's not going to be able to marry the uh, Miguel because he is you know, just a worker. Um, so that's something that she's kind of dealing with because they've been friends. Um, and, and, and Esperanza kind of tells this to Miguel and, and she explains it to him. Um, this, this, this theory or this thought that there's like a river between them, right. That like, um, Esperanza is on one side, Miguel is on the other side and they, they, they can't get married or do the things that they talked about when they were really little, um, for these reasons in Mexico, it's not like acceptable at this time, uh, for Esperanza to do that. Um, so then, then what happens is Papa's stepbrothers, Tio Luis and Tio Marco, they come to the ranch because they've heard that Papa is missing. Uh, Esperanza right away lets us know that she is not a fan of them, right? Both of her uncles. Um, one of them is the bank president. The other one is the mayor of the town. Um, they like, they seem to not be the greatest people. Um, so they come in and, and Esperanza is, is nervous because all of her interactions with her, uh, uncles so, so far in her life haven't been like the greatest interactions, right? She, they're normally not really nice to her. They don't really talk to her too much. Um, but she's getting really nervous, um, and worried because, they're being really nice to her. And this is the first time that they're being nice to her. It seems like they're her whole life. So she really feels like, oh my gosh, something is, is going wrong here because her uncles are, are being nice to her. Um, and then uh, after she figures this out or she's having these feelings, that's kind of as our chapter wraps up, finally that wagon comes to the house uh, that Miguel and uh, Alfonso are riding in. Uh, and there's something in the back of the wagon, and that's the end of our chapter. Um, 
again, really important things for this chapter are to think about uh, the historical context, right? The Mexican Revolution and how that affected uh, or is affecting our story here, right? With Papa being a wealthy landowner and them talking about bandits um, and some reasons that they might have uh, issues with Papa. Uh, the other thing we have to think about here are some of our characters, right? We find out who Esperanza is, her mother, her grandmother, her uncles, and then uh, Hortensia, who is like their, um, their housemaid, Alfonso, who is uh, like Papa's head worker or lead worker, and their son, Miguel, and the relationships that these people have with each other. Um, and especially focusing on the relationship between Miguel and Esperanza and how that historical part or even cultural part, you would say, at the time has influenced how Esperanza feels um, in terms of what she was talking about when she was younger and now what she has to face as she's older or what she's realizing uh, her culture has told her um, that she needs to or that she should not, I'm sorry, you know, marry Miguel and, and, and spend time with Miguel. Um, so hopefully you can hold on to those few things. Um, Miss Legal and I are posting uh, this summary that I, uh, that I just gave you. Uh, it'll be in a, in a Google Slides for you to read through some of the important parts. Also, the answers to the first chapter questions that you did in Google uh, form that will also be posted today to look at. So you should look at those questions and this um, and the, the sorry, the answer to the questions, the summary before you go ahead and, and move forward into the things for chapter two. All right. So hopefully you guys are looking so far and uh, hopefully chapter two has some answers for you and you can kind of build upon the things from chapter one. Enjoy.